Okay. Um, so we're looking looking at the, some of our, the questions um, that were that were posted, and we were answering the fourth question is, which is, uh, you know, how can a sinning man still speak in tongues and move the gifts, right? So we saw that the Corinthian church uh, being an example of that. But the thing is that we, uh, the Spirit of God has been given to us uh, so that we can be overcomers, we can move away from that, you know, to break the power of sin. Okay? The Spirit of God has there to empower us to overcome sin. Okay, um, okay so we have a question here from Elisha. Is, is there any relationship between the baptism, gifts of the Spirit, and salvation? Well, um, uh, could you just... Um, uh, okay, uh, of course, you know, when, when, I, when I look at these three terms, we see that when we look at these three terms, we see that it's uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is involved in all three, right? Uh, gifts of the Spirit, of course, gifts by the Holy Spirit. And when we look at salvation, that we are born again by the Spirit of God and, of course, the incorruptible Word of God. So, uh, and then the baptism uh, of the Holy Spirit, which uh, our baptism with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Greek used there can be translated as baptism with, a baptism in, a baptism of. So we see that it again involves uh, the Holy Spirit. Well, that's the um, uh, th that's something that we see as a common thread of all these three terms, where the Holy Spirit is the one who brings that about. Um, in terms of uh, you know progression, well. The person is born again, which is the person is saved, and uh, the person is filled with the Spirit, uh, baptized with the Spirit, and begins to, you know, move or receive the gifts of the Spirit, desire the gifts of the Spirit, and walk in the gifts of the Spirit. Right. So, uh, I would, uh, unless you have something more specific, Elisha, about this, um, about this particular th question. You could, uh, I'm sorry. Specifically, what I was, what I wanted to ask is in reference mm -hmm. to um, when the person doesn't receive the baptism of the, of the Holy Spirit and does not operate in any of the gifts, um, does it mean that that individual cannot be saved? Um, well, oh, I see. Okay. No. So the, the person is saved. You know, uh, how is a person born again? A person is born again when you, uh, you know, uh, I think we can, let's look at uh, um, the book of Acts. Uh, if you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, one is born again, right? Um, um, so, yeah, uh, Acts 38, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins and, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, um, so one is born again uh, when one uh, confesses uh, the name of the Lord Jesus and uh, receives forgiveness and is, the person is born again, right? So, uh, so uh, as a born again person, uh, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes and indwells. We are sealed by the Spirit of God, uh, as what we see uh, in the epistles, uh, when Paul writes it, and, and he says that you know you, know, you are sealed by the Spirit. The Spirit of God uh, is in, indwelling us, and He is helping us. And as we have studied also, you know, in the life of the believer, how does the Holy Spirit help us in sanctification, in living a holy life, in empowering work? So He does all that, right? So the Holy Spirit is indwelling us now. Uh, uh, you know, to be baptized in the Spirit. Um, and maybe I can live in ignorance and not really desire that. Right? I can, uh, especially with regard to the gifts, uh, I can again live in ignorance or a wrong understanding of it and not really desire that. And maybe even be fearful of that, right? As something not of God. Uh, and uh, so as a believer, you know, I can be born again, have the indwelling presence of the Spirit, and not have the experience of being baptized in the Spirit, and not have the experience of uh, walking in the gifts of the Spirit. It is it is possible. 
Right? But that does not mean that I'm not born again. I'm a child of God, and I'm accepted in the will of it. Right? Um, and my destiny has changed. I'm going to be with Jesus. You know, that all that assurance of salvation, everything is there, and the Holy Spirit will lead me. You know, he will give me opportunities, will give a person opportunities to know the truth, to to hunger and thirst for more of God and to to, to walk this path of uh, of the believer, you know, uh, of the disciple to, to be baptized and so on. Um, so, yes, ignorance, wrong understanding, maybe fear could keep me away from that. But that does not mean that a person is uh, not born again. Right. I think that was your question. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pastor. Okay. Right. Um, you're welcome. So the next one is, what does it mean when people refer to tongues uh, speaking as heavenly language? So it's, uh, again, 1 Corinthians 13, right? Where um, Paul uh, uh, writes to the Corinthian believers. He's talking about, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Um, he's listed the gifts, right? All the nine gifts are listed. Uh, the second part of 1 Corinthians 12 is talked about the body of Christ, how every believer is a member of the body of Christ. Towards the end of 1 Corinthians 12, he's talked about the some of the ministry gifts, um, uh, you know, uh, and he's talking about the apostle, the prophet, and so on. Then 1 Corinthians 13, um, he's talking about love being uh, the motivating factor, the foundation for the use of the gifts, right? So uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 1, he says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass uh, or a clanging cymbal. So here, you know, he says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels. So he's talking about the spiritual gifts. He's talking about uh, you know, the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, here in particular reference to tongues, he's saying, though I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels. You know, so then, and that's the reference to the heavenly language. You know, uh, uh, tongues of men, earthly, earthly realm, earthly language, um, tongues of angels, heavenly realm, heavenly language. So that's the, um, that is where this, this whole uh, reference uh, to heavenly language, uh, this comes from. Okay, I hope that helps. As a follow up, as a follow up on that, yeah. Um, then would it be entirely true that to say that uh, Satan does not understand tongues because uh, we know Satan to be a fallen angel. He, he comes from heaven. So if mm -hmm. um, tongues is a language of angels or heavenly language, um, would it be entirely true to say that Satan does not understand? Um, yeah, so the thing is, uh, Satan, Lucifer, fallen angel. So, uh, so I don't know. Just uh, again, my my opinion um, that he would have known the tongues of angels, you know, to communicate with Michael or Gabriel, whatever. So, uh, so that's the thing. But um, so he might have known. I'm just you know saying. Um, but the fact is that should not trouble the believer. You know, even if. Satan or any other powers of darkness, uh, when I'm praying in tongues, you know, if they know, that should not trouble the believer because um, uh, the believer has been given authority you know, because of the victory that was um, won on the cross by the Lord. The believer has been um, given the authority, given the wisdom to thwart, uh, to put down every fiery dart of the enemy. Right? Uh, so when we walk with the Lord, when we walk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, uh, we uh, we have been given the authority as born again believers. We've been given the authority. Uh, uh, so uh, that should not trouble us, uh, because the Lord Jesus in the in the commission, He said, you know, in the in the in commissioning the disciples, He said, you know, these signs will follow those who believe. They will cast out demons. And so many times that is the thing, you know. Does Satan know? You know, what if he knows? Um, what if the powers of darkness, you know, know about these things that I'm praying about? No problem. We have been given the authority. Right? Uh, Luke chapter ten verse nineteen talks about um, our serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. He has won the victory. Right? Uh, maybe I'll just read that verse exactly. Um, yeah, Luke ten verse nineteen. Um, 
Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So that's that's the promise of the Lord for the believer. So, um, so it shouldn't it it needn't bother us. It really shouldn't bother us. As we grow in the understanding of the authority that He's given us, as we grow in intimacy with the Lord. You know, with them, with the you know, as we increase in intimacy or grow in our relationship with the Lord, authority is just a natural overflow of that, outflow of that. Yeah. Does that help, Alicia? Yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Okay. Most welcome. Okay. So let's uh, let's just go through the list. Okay. Um, okay, here's a, maybe I, I I won't project the thing. I'll just put the questions here in the chat. Okay. Um, okay, here's an interesting question. Uh, let me just put it in the chat. Okay. Okay. So once we receive the Holy Spirit, is it possible that He might leave because of some sin? Okay. Uh, does anybody want to answer that? Once we receive the Holy Spirit, is it possible that he might leave because of some sin? Um, just think about whatever we discussed so far, uh, why the Holy Spirit has come, the purpose for which he has come, the purpose for which he indwells the believer, and so on. And that should you know, help us to answer this question. Um, anyone? Okay, yeah, go ahead, Avdesh. Uh, um, you can unmute and speak, Avdesh. I can't hear you. Um, you can also put it in the chat. Uh, okay, anyone? Okay, I see many names here. Collins, John Paul, Robert, Leah, Lama, Rebecca, anyone? So when we receive the Holy Spirit, okay. No, but repeated sins, yeah, sins it, sin itself grieves the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we can give, um, you know, very quickly, we can give a resounding no you know, as our response to that question. And the reason is this, okay. Um, the, the reason is this, you know, John chapter 14, and if you look at uh, verse, um, you know, verse, uh, verses 15 and 16, right? This is the Lord Jesus teaching about the Holy Spirit to the disciples. You know, he's teaching about what will happen uh, when he goes to the Father. Okay, so um, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Okay. So he uh, very clearly says that he may abide with you. Abide means to dwell, to stay, that he may stay with you forever. And forever is a long time. Right? Forever is uh, uh, is a long period of time. He doesn't give any conditions, you know, that he may stay with you, you know, if you live a holy life or if you stay, if he, you know, he'll stay with you as long as you're making righteous choice. No, he'll stay with you forever. The spirit of truth, truth whom the world cannot receive because neither sees him, but he dwells with you and will be in you. Okay, and the time period given there in verse 15, verse 16 is forever. And the reason is very simple, right? He has come to empower, uh, empower us, to live like Jesus, right? To do the good works, to um, to break down the the works of the enemy in in our own lives, in the lives of others, right? To walk like Jesus, to minister like Jesus, and that's why He has come. And now it is possible for the believer to go back, 
you know, to to be a carnal believer, to focus on the things of the flesh, to be to entangle, you know, maybe the person has fallen and, you know, getting entangled in various kinds of sin. And the thing is, the Holy Spirit is there to help the believer come out. Right? He's, he's convicting the believer. He's warning the believer. You know, he's empowering the believer. But the believer has to make the right choice. Right? He will speak. He will direct. He will warn. Um, but the believer has to make the choice to obey. Right? So, so that's the thing. Right? Uh, uh, again, Romans chapter 8 talks about that. That if you live a carnal life, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, how do you put to death the deeds of the body? By the Spirit. Like by the leading of the spirit, if you put to death deeds of the body, you will live. Again, we see the we see the scripture: walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Right? Which means that the desires of the flesh, there is a draw. You know, uh, as long as we are in the flesh, there is the temptation. Satan also comes and you know tempts. But if we walk in the spirit, we will not desire the. Uh, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And so he helps us to walk a holy life. He helps us to live a whole overcoming life. And uh, uh, yes, the the the, the uh, uh, even when the believer is fallen, struggling with stronghold, the, the Holy Spirit enables the believer to overcome and to break those chains and come out. And so, praise God! Right? I think a lot of us can testify to the work of the Spirit. You know, I, for one, can testify to the work of the Spirit. You know, I was a believer, living a very carnal life. You know, Monday to Friday, living a very carnal life, or Monday to Saturday. Um, and uh, this is many years ago, You know, struggling with various kinds of things. If not for the gift, gifts of the Spirit, if not for the message of um, you know, the identity in Christ, I would have lost my mind. Because I was living, you know, there's only so much you can live, uh, you know, uh, living in two worlds, right? Living as a carnal person, living as, a, so that, that that was my life. But praise God for the anointing, empowering, the persistence of the Holy Spirit. Right? That I was able to come out. He took me out, but I had to cooperate. He exposed uh, my all my sins and everything, and uh, I had to, you know, uh, come clean and he put me in to ministry so praise god he will never leave but um, he is always the lord himself said i will never leave you nor forsake you i'm with you till the end of the ages but if we don't uh, you know obey his prompting if you ob don't follow his leading then you know we are we are we are literally wasting our life here on earth right? uh, but if we follow if we if by the Spirit we put to death the deeds of the body, we will live because we have been we've been created for that. We've been designed for that as born again believers, right? Okay, um, let's look at another question. Okay, uh, this is a question considering the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, would it be wrong for any person to refer to him as? Holy Spirit, without the definite article, the, uh, I don't think it's wrong. Uh, say you know, uh, because the would of course definite article would mean uh, you're referring to um, you know he's unique, etc. But uh, it's not. It won't be wrong uh, to. That that was the question. It, it it's fine. It's uh, it's. Uh, I think it's a, just a case of semantics, right? Okay, so he, here's another question. Um, what are familiar spirits? Can a person who has a Holy Spirit um, have a familiar spirit? So, yeah, I just wanted your response on that. Anyone who can answer? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just want to, uh, you know, kind of um, say that uh, you have a course on um, uh, on the author on on demonology and, uh, and dealing with right, uh, 
deliverance and healing and deliverance, right? Uh, which talks about, we, we go into depths uh, of that particular topic um, uh, about the spirit, spirit world and spirit and so on. So we we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, but very quickly, you know, uh, about familiar spirits, we see that, um, you know, there are different kinds of spirits, right? We see a uh, spirit of lust or uh, unclean spirit and they uh, are um, lying spirits and so on. So they they are termed such because they carry out that function. You know, they bring about maybe their, their work is just to you know create a uh, uh, or uh, tempt a person with lustful thoughts and and uh, you know make them fall. Right. So we see these kinds of spirits. Uh, so a familiar spirit would be uh, familiar with the information uh, about a person, and and you know we see that in um, even in uh, when it comes to. Uh, people trying to call out or bring up the spirit of the dead and so on. A familiar spirit would pretend to be like, you know, that person's spirit, uh, a human spirit, but we know that, you know, uh, uh, that is not possible because one, once a person dies, uh, he either goes to the presence of God or, you know, away from the presence of God, right? Um, so a familiar spirit is is some something with has the information tries to you know, pretend like a spirit. So, so the, anyway, coming back to the question, um, so can a person who has the Holy Spirit still have a familiar spirit? Well, the possible is that uh, the possibility is that uh, as a person who's born again, I can open the door for the influence of uh, 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 you know spirit of darkness right an evil spirit so let me just say evil spirit for any kind of you know a category of spirits like familiar spirits whatever you know um, so as a believer it is possible that I open up some doors when I willfully walk in sin when I willfully uh, commit or when I dabble in the occult, you know, as a believer, uh, when I do that, then I'm opening up the door for, I mean, giving legal ground for, you know, Satan to step in to my life. Right? Um, the Bible, Ephesians 4 talks about, uh, uh, you know, don't give a foothold for the enemy. Let the sun um, not go down on your wrath, nor give a foothold for the enemy. Now, uh, I could give a foothold for the enemy, right? Um, but the the thing is that um, uh, I could open up for the influence of the spirit. Now that is very possible. Okay, so, so that is possible. But uh, to be demonized by a spirit, now that is not. Uh, now that that is not something. It's to the extent to which I can give control over to uh, you know a family a spirit or any any spirit. Yes, it is possible for the uh, for the believer, child of God, to give over the control, right? Uh, to open a door to the influence of the spirit. Right. Okay. Um. Let's look at another question. Um, okay, uh, I think uh, this is Mark chapter 3, 28, 29. How will we know that we have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit? Or what are the things that are against the Holy Spirit that lead us to eternal condemnation? Um so let's look at Mark 3, 28, 29. Okay. Um, so this refers to um, the Lord Jesus. Um, uh, he's coming and he's, he's just finished um, the deliverance. And, uh, and people are saying that, um, that the Lord Jesus has Beelzebub. Or, um, and then they're saying, by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. You know, he's employing the, uh, the power of demons in order to cast out demons. Well, the, the reality is the demon was ca cast out, right? So then the Lord gives the explanation. He says, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand, and and so on. And then he says, um, uh, Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men 
and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Right. So, so this is what uh, he says. So, so the thing is, um, I think we 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 did you know address this about the blasphemy blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and uh, you know we we looked at it. Uh, in the earlier chapters, so I won't go into the details of that. Um, but just to say that, um, you know, when we attribute the works of the Holy Spirit to the works of uh, works of demon, and we when we when we doing when we did do it knowingly, okay? Because if we say if we if you look at it, they the, they were it's not like they were ignorant of the fact, but they they wanted their own positions to be secure. You know, time and again, if you look at, um, you know, the, the Pharisees, the scribes, and and how they dealt with Jesus, interacted with the Lord Jesus, you see that uh, it's not that they wanted, they asked questions, Not it's not that they wanted to know the truth, but they wanted to trap him. Okay, so their motive uh, for making these statements, the motive for uh, saying these things, it's not because they wanted to know the truth or they were declaring truth, but knowing what the truth is, they were uh, willingly rebelling against the truth. Okay, so here are these teachers of the law, and the Lord is saying, you know, you are actually blaspheming. You are attributing what God has done. Um, and you're attributing that to the work of the enemy. And you're continuing to attribute that to the work of the enemy. Now, that's a blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And that will not be forgiven because you're continuing to do that. Knowing the truth, you continue to uh, blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And you're continuing to do that. Right. So that's what um, the Lord says. Now, uh, what are the things against the Holy Spirit that lead us to eternal condemnation? That's the second part of the question. So the thing is this, uh, in, the, in the scripture, you know, we, we looked at Hebrews, um, Hebrews 10. Right? We know that we are saved by the grace of God. We know that we are born again by the grace of God. We know that we fall and, uh, and the Spirit of God enables us, brings us to conviction, you know, enables us to rise up again and walk in righteousness. Um, now, Hebrews 10, 26 talks about a scenario where a person is sinning willfully and um, who is rejecting Christ, um, the Son of God, who tramples the Son of God underfoot, it says in verse 29, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace. Okay, so it's doing a, a list of things here. Um, so totally rejecting the work of salvation. Okay, a person is so scarred or, by, or seared the conscience after having known the truth. And uh, it says that, you know, in, in such a scenario, in such a scenario, um, then, well, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's very difficult for that person to come back. You know, that's what it says here. That um, um, uh, let me just read. Uh, um, oh yeah. Um, for if we okay, verse twenty six itself. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice. That's the reality. But a certain fearful. Uh, expectation of judgment and the fiery indignation which will devour the adversary. Now we need to read through the rest of the verses also. It talks about um, you know rejecting the sun, uh, uh, counting the blood of the covenant a common thing, and then insulting the spirit of grace, etc. So there's a so it talks about a person who's willfully doing that. And then verse 39, he closes the chapter with saying that, but we are not of those who draw back draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. So, uh, so that's, that is what, uh, you know, is expected of us. You know, uh, another place where uh, the writer of Hebrews also says a similar thing is in Hebrews 6 and verse 9. Right? He talks about, uh, again, the same things, right? Um, for if they, let's say, uh, Hebrews 6 and verse 6, um, verse 4 onwards, sorry. For it is impossible for those who have once enlightened, 
and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of partakers of the holy spirit and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the age to come if they fall away okay now that falling away is a willful walking away willful rejection if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of god and put him to an open shame and then refers 7 and 8 talks about how the earth it drinks in the rain um you know it bears uh, is is expected to bear useful be useful and bear herbs useful for those cultivated it receives blessings from god but you know if it does not then uh, only thorns and briars are there and it is rejected right um but in verse 9 saying but beloved we are confident of better things concerning you yes things that accompany salvation though we speak in this manner so it's a, it's a warning Uh, but it also talks about the reality that a person can actually reject so this would you know i'll just place it uh, and probably you know stop there saying that yes it is possible if a person willfully rejects everything but we also know that the grace of god is able to save to the uttermost which means that god is going to give that person you know an opportunity to turn back an opportunity to turn back an opportunity to turn back till the very end but till the very end if the person does not turn back right if the person continues to reject the the offer of god then there is there is nothing else no other option but eternal condemnation but it's a very very difficult thing to reach that place for a believer you know sometimes we think it's is easy you know it's it's difficult because of the grace of god because of the persistence of the holy spirit it is a difficult thing right um because god is going to pursue that person um until the very end but it involves the will a choice that the person has to make as well okay um okay so some very interesting questions um okay how can a person hear the voice of this holy spirit i think uh, we won't go into that okay um uh i think we've looked at it in detail in the course uh, you can always refer to the videos if you want to refresh um your understanding of it okay question number 11 so my uh, question is can evil spirits still influence man even when he has god's spirit okay i think that we looked at that as well okay last question what is the difference between indwelling uh when we put our trust and the baptism uh it is a is it a one thing or a continuous process okay i think that also we have uh, addressed so we won't go into that we know there is a difference between the inf- uh, indwelling uh, or presence of the holy spirit uh, when we are born again the holy spirit comes and indwells the believer we are sealed by the the, the holy spirit uh, the holy spirit comes and indwells us as a guarantee um you know uh, as an earnest for what is to come so that's what uh, happens to the believer uh, when we talk about the baptism of the holy spirit there is an experience that uh, uh, that god takes the believer through to empower the believer for the sake of others right like we see uh, the lord jesus telling the disciples that you know you will accept a one that you will be empowered to be witnesses in uh Jerusalem Judea and the uttermost parts of the earth right so uh so that is the thing it's uh is baptism a continuous one time event or a continuous process well we if we read we see that the, there is the baptism of the holy spirit and there are several infillings of the holy spirit or anointing of the holy spirit um uh, we see in acts chapter 2 that the people who are baptized by the spirit uh we see uh, you know uh, later also that when they gathered together that they were filled with the spirit uh, and uh, the whole place was shaken right then we read about peter and uh, john that they filled by the spirit they addressed the people uh, uh, those who were questioning so we see that it is a continuous process of being filled with the spirit and uh, we are commanded to be filled with the spirit ephesians uh, talks about um, where paul writes and he says you know be filled with the spirit uh, and uh, um, not with wine in which is dissipation be filled with the spirit uh, except uh, sorry uh, ephesians chapter 5 
and verse 18 do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit and the and the greek there is to go on continue being filled with the holy spirit right be filled with the holy spirit so it is a continuous thing it's not just an event but it's a continuous process all through life that every day uh, every moment to be filled with the spirit of god right okay um with that, I think we've come to the end of the questions, end of, uh, I think we've finished the, the course. Um, any any questions, any further questions uh, from your from your side? I have a question on the chat. <laughs> yes, uh, you put it, okay. Why is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit unforgivable? Okay, sorry, I, I, I missed out there. Okay, um, the only reason that we see is that um, uh, blasphemy against the spirit, uh, especially in the context of uh, you know what happened here uh, with the Lord, uh, who's um, you know uh, uh, who was blasphemed against. So we see that the Lord giving the explanation um, uh, because uh, I'm sorry. The, the scenario is that the people who actually knew um, that it was a work of God did not attribute it to God, but attributed it to the devil. So. So that is the uh, that is the explanation. You know, we see that that they knew the truth, but uh, did not act, did not accept the truth, but chose to uh, rebel against the truth. And uh, but more importantly, they were actually calling a work of God as the work of the devil. Right? So they were blaspheming against the work of the Holy Spirit, and uh, that's the only understanding that we see here that it was a blasphemy against the holy spirit they were attributing the work of god to be the work of the enemy uh, having known the truth so so the lord jesus says that this is not you know uh, it is unforgivable yeah um but having said that you know i just wanted to say that you know if a man repents okay so here it's a scenario where a person knows the truth is unwilling to submit to the truth continuing to speak against the truth right uh, for several reasons i don't want to lose my position i don't want to you know uh, whatever pride call it pride whatever um but if the same person uh turns around and uh, submits to the truth and asks for forgiveness uh, the lord is there to forgive right? one john one nine talks about that that uh if we confess our sins, that he is just, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. So that promise holds true. But this unforgiveness uh, uh, is for someone who is continuing, you know, unwilling to, uh, to come around and uh, uh, to accept the truth. Right? So it says that, uh, it is not. It will not be forgiven. I mean, that's that is what we see. Uh, you know, that's what we can learn from the from these verses. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, shall we pray and close? Um, yeah. So, I just want to say uh, today. I think it was almost a full class. I'm quite surprised. Um, uh, I I think. Uh, I missed uh, seeing some of you guys in the earlier classes for whatever reason. But I'm, uh, yeah, I'm glad that you could join. And uh, um, yeah, it was it was good going through this entire course material. Uh, it's a very important topic and something that we can grow in our understanding over and over again. And uh, as we looked at, um, you know, some of the. Uh, 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 the, the aspects of the, I mean, some of, uh, you look at the gifts of the spirit. Um, just want to remind us again what Paul uh, wrote to the Corinthians, uh, one Corinthians fourteen: pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Just remind yourself every day: you know, pursue the love of God, pursue the agape of God, and desire spiritual gifts. The reason to pursue the love of God is to grow in our intimacy with God, grow in our relationship with God. Right, um, so you can hear the whispers of the Holy Spirit uh, clearly, being sensitive to it, right, and and being obedient to the the instructions. Uh, 
and by the same uh, token you know he says that um, pursue or desire spiritual gifts the reason is that uh, strongly desire uh, the spiritual gifts because god wants to show himself strong in these in these uh, through these gifts and god wants you to be a minister uh, of uh, righteousness and minister in power the way he himself minister the lord wants you wants us to be strong in that right so every day just remind yourself you know i'm going to pursue love i'm going to pursue god i'm going to pursue the character of god i'm going to be christ like in my choices in my thinking and my speaking and at the same time i'm going to desire go after the gifts go after the power of god go after the spiritual gifts it's not one or the other right it's both the character of god and the power of god and that's how the lord wants us as believers to minister to walk in that is how we will perfectly you know we will represent him perfectly to the world that is outside right um not with one leaving out the other okay so uh let's pray and and we'll close okay okay father we we thank you lord we thank you for this time spent in your word lord these um in the several months father we thank you for the understanding that you've given us for the illumination through the work of your spirit to our hearts lord father we uh, we just want to thank you uh, for uh, your presence in our lives god we thank you for the work of your spirit lord we thank you for leading us and uh, i pray god today that uh, for each and every person in class god who's here and um, who's not uh, not here as well i pray that um, lord that you'll continue to take them from strength to strength and from glory to glory yes lord i pray that each one of us will grow in our understanding of you grow in our relationship with you grow in intimacy god um and and lord that each one of us will also desire the, the spiritual gifts lord in order to edify the church not to destroy the body of believers in order to be a blessing god in other people's in the lives of other people and to glorify your name god because the, the we read that your spirit glorifies exalts jesus that your name will be exalted in and through our lives and lord we to this end we commit ourselves we pray that you'll continue to take us on this path that we might be a blessing to others may we grow in relationship may we grow in our relationship with you may we grow in our love for you may we grow in faith may we grow in understanding and revelation of scriptures may we grow in authority lord may we grow in the anointing god and um, Yes, Lord, we just want to be vessels of honor in Your hand and dispensers of the aroma of Christ in each and every place. We thank You. We give You all the praise and we give You all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. God bless you all. Uh, hope to catch up with you guys uh, next semester. If you're, if you're. doing any of the other courses right god bless you bye bye